great to a child, and knows not who is the father. Believe me, brother, he was a gentleman. Nay, I believe that. But Joan, Joan, sister Joan, can you tell me his name that did it? How would you call my nephew your bastard when we had it? Alas, I know not the gentleman's name, brother. I met him in these woods the last great hunting. He was so kind and offered me so much, I had not the heart to ask him more. Not his name? Oh, sister, this shows your country breeding now. Have you been born in the city, you would have had the child, the husband first, and the child afterwards. Have you no marks to remember him by? He had the most rich attire, a fair hat and feathers, a gilt sword, a most excellent dagger. Oh, pox on his dagger when he had been gilded for his labor. But have you heard him swear you? Aye, as you did. But lying and swearing goes together still. <laughs> did his oaths get you with child? We shall have a roaring boy in faith. I must leave you now. Dear brother, stay. Help me to find him. I'll ask no further. So, who shall I ask for? Who shall I find? Alas, I know not. These woods are witness of his oaths and promises. Do but inquire in this forest. I'll go with you. Some happy fate may guide us till we meet him. Meet him? And what shall we call him when we meet him? Swift so, can neither know him nor can tell what to call him. <clears throat> But I'll do my best for you. I'll make a proclamation! Yes, if these woods and trees, as you say, will bear any witness, let them answer. Oh yes, if there be any man who will step forward in conscience sake and acknowledge himself to be a whore master, he shall have that charge laid him within the hour. He shall not be rid of in an age. If he has lands, he shall have an heir. If he has patience, he shall have a wife. If he has neither lands nor patience, he shall have a whore. Could I but meet a man and tell of her beauties, these trees would bend their tops to kiss the air that from my lips should give her praises up. He speaks of a woman, sister. This may be he, brother. Come, view him well. You see, he has a fair sword, but his daggers are fallen. It was here I first saw her. Here be her beauty. Had I known her name, I'd be happy. Oh, tis he, sister. He knows not your name, neither. A couple of wise fools in faith to get children and know not one another. You weeping leaves upon whose tender cheeks do stand a flood of tears at my complaint. You heard my vows and oaths. Law, law, he is a great swearer, too, sister. Tis he. For having overtook her, I saw and felt desire, but... Enjoy not. Welcome, my second comfort. Artesia, dearest love, it is my brother, my princely brother. Oh, give him welcome as you love my health. You have so free a welcome, sir, from me, as this your power, present has this power over me, I swear, a stranger, though I must forget my country name and friends and count this place as my joy and birthright. She, tis she, oh, good gods, it is she. Face us all in the woods, captivated my senses. And thus, for many months, far me from all society and me. Dear brother, how came she to this place? Speak that angel's name, or heaven bless the name. Speak to your sir. It is Artesia, the royal Saxon princess. A woman, no deity, no fiend shaped mockeries in the admiring sense, upon whose hope as low as mine can live, love, and enjoy. <clears throat> Dear brother, may it not? She is all the hope and joy I can ask for. My wife. My queen, your wife. What troubles you, dear brother? Why with so strange and fixed an eye do you behold my joys? You are not well, sir. Yes, yes. You immortal powers, why is poor man so many entrances for sorrow to creep in at? When our sense is much too weak to hold his happiness. No more. I see your arrival in the joys of my high bliss. Come, Artesia, the day's most praise when tis eclipsed by night. Great good must have his great dull officer. Uh, stay. Hear but a word. Yeah, now that I think on it, it is your women. And if it were mine, I'd be able to please lost my And he speaks no such words, has no such looks. 
So you rest until you're done. Let's do our nuptial chamber. Could you not speak so? I would not fear how much my grief did grow. Oh, no, on, set on. Oh, no, the trash can is the thing. I know that reference. I'll get you. <laughs> Emily, 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 Emily. Meg gets me.
that with advantage thus have won the king, to back your factions and to work our ruins. Let by the gods and my good sword I'll set in lines upon your duly home. Shield and standard, noble soldiers. We have firm hope that though our dragons sleep, Merlin will our fair kingdom and us keep. Well, as his uncle lives, I warrant you. Happy restorer of Britain's fame, uprising sun, let us salute your glory. Ride in a day of perpetual about us, and no night be in your throne zodiac. Why do we wait to bind those princely brows of this imperial honor? Say no, Boston. That monster must be first expelled from our eye. We shall take no joy in Captain Henris, then give her quick judgment. Send her hence to death, for she has long deserved it. Let my sentence stand for all. Take her hence and stake her carcass in the burning sun, till it be parched and dry, and then flay off her wicked skin. <laughs> Do you laugh, Rick, though? Yes, at your poor invention. Is there no better torture monger? Burn her to dust! That's a phoenix's death, and glorious. Aye, that's too good for her. Alive she shall be buried, circled in a wall. You murderous of a king, there you will starve to death. Then I'll starve death when he comes for his prey. And in the meantime, I'll live upon your curses. Aye, tis diet good enough. Take her away. With joy, my best of wishes is before. Your brother's poisoned, but I want him more. Why does our prophet Merlin stand apart from these our ceremonies, and not applaud, applaud our joy with your knowledge? Let your divining art not satisfy some part of my desires. For all I know, it's your power to show the full thing. That will both end our reign and profitable. Speak, Lord of Merlin, and absolve my fears. Whether by war we expel the Saxons, or government we hold with beauty's peace in Wales and Britain. Long happiness and ten pen dragons reign. Whatever decrees fate has no power to alter. So, so please, Your Grace, I will invisible apparition present you with prophecy through my art of future princes, which my art shall raise until men call these times the latter days. Do it, my Merlin. You crown me with much joy and wonder. I'm a heavy guy. <laughs> Go stab something else.